Back again with another LED torch review. This time it's a weapon light, the PL2 Valkyrie from Olight, and they sent this to me. I'm not exactly sure why I didn't request it, but I'm going to do a video on it anyway. General application for this would be law enforcement, military, or anyone with an interest in a light for firearms. Looking at the back, just go through some of the specifications on the torch. We have a big output on this one, it's 1200 lumens. You also have a momentary function as well as as a strobe mode you'll notice that the 1200 has a drop down after about one and a half minutes from 1200 to 600 lumens taking out the box you see nice chunky build as you'd expect from Olight and under here we have some accessories there is a T-star key and a separate adapter this will fit the 1913 and the idea is to remove the Glock uh, one that's already pre-fitted and put the 1913 if you need to. So you have a choice of the two mounting systems on the Picatinny rails with that. Quick look over the manual. Very straightforward and well laid out. Clear diagrams. And this runs off of two CR123A batteries and you get those included. Operation, you have the constant on or off with a single press. Momentary function and a strobe when you press both of the switches at the same time. And the switch design is quite interesting on this. They've got two, so it can use left and right hand side on this. So that's particularly useful if you're left handed. I am left handed myself. So you'll be able to use both of them with um, either side, which is unusual for most of the LED torches on the weapons. Now you have the rail system here where you can just push the lever so you have a quick mount system and it looks pretty chunky. Unfortunately I can't test this on a real weapon where I am. Firearms are illegal unless you're in the army or the military or with the police force that using firearms. There's absolutely no way I can get to use them. Both of the contacts are spring loaded and these are the included cells. They are non-rechargeable. You can use rechargeables, but some of the normal ones I had would trip the protection circuit. So you'd want the hydrain ones for that particular use. You'll get a shorter run time. Can't complain much on the build, very nice and solid. You see we have an uneven finish on the bezel as well. As usual, the coated glass and you have a special optical lens on the front that should give us an interesting effect. We'll compare it to another weapon light shortly. Operation on the light, very straightforward. Single press, quick press, turns it on, and both buttons do exactly the same thing. So you can use either side. So that single quick press on and off. And then if you push and hold, it stays in momentary mode for as long as you are holding the button down. So that means that you're not stuck with a hold down um, for 10 seconds and then if you leave it on for longer it will continue to light so you have full control on the momentary function and that's different to some of the weapon lights to go into the strobe mode you just press both at the same time and to get out of that mode you just press any other button again so i think the design on the interface is very well thought out and will prove useful now unfortunately because of the weapon situation i'm just going to have to use a plastic um, pretend glock type weapon with the picatinny rail and you'll be able to find on a real weapon you'll be able to push this to further down the rail it's because this is a bb gun it's not really designed for proper use with this sort of thing but you can see that i can easily get to the switch with the trigger finger and that's exactly the idea is it's one-handed operation because you'll be holding the pistol grip with the other hand and you can just turn on and off the light easily without actually moving your hand position apart from just pushing your finger forward and that's in contrast perhaps to the Rofus one which I looked at whereas you can't really do single-handed operation on that because of the button location it's still quite a nice weapon light I did a review on that it has a second rail at the bottom I'm not sure if that's of use it's a bit smaller it runs off of a single CR123A cell so they're a bit different and this doesn't have the quick release either that's an advantage to the Olight you see the Olight is a lower profile too do take note with the switch at the back here for the latch mechanism you need to push that fully up and then down fully to um, get it to engage properly and this is a quick waterproof test outside this is rated to IPX6 so you shouldn't have any problems with water penetration just doing my beam shots now around about 100 foot and you'll see on the PL2 quite a bright light output from this it's very comparable to the high power 18650 torches so we have that spotlight in the middle 
got quite a bit of peripheral illumination and on the Rofus this is 600 lumens so the power outputs around about half it's still quite bright for a weapon light I don't quite get the same spread from that torch so we'll have a look at the beam patterns and I've got the PL2 and I'm just moving it back you can see there's quite a lot of edge illumination with this as well it surprised me a bit you don't normally expect to get so much peripheral illumination the G1 a bit less you still got a very similar pattern in the middle weapon lights will tend to have a spot in the middle to illuminate the target or what you're looking at outside we're on the PL2 and you'll see Again, with that illumination, it's really lit up the whole scene with that central target area in the middle with more intensity. And on the G1, similar beam pattern, but doesn't quite have the width of the O-Light. That's probably down to that optical lens, I imagine, the design of that. Do bear in mind that the O-Light will drop down to roughly about the same level as the Rofus after just before a couple of minutes. On the telephoto tests, again, good illumination. Pretty impressive power output from this and that's down to the fact that it's using two batteries versus a single cell and just down the side of the house again we only have one single power output which is very much what you get with a weapon light so not only do you get a big illumination in the middle you get quite a nice widespread too and on top of the roof nice range on this with the focused spot in the middle and i'm pointing at a building good couple of hundred feet away easily if not a bit more and that's lighting that up so I can see that very clearly no problems with that at all closer up beam shot you see the intensity there is blowing out the camera a bit and we'll switch it to the strobe mode that could disorientate an attacker normally I leave a review conclusion but as I can't test this on a real weapon in other words the durability of the light with recoil and things like that I can't really do a full review so it's more of a hands-on and overview as I've already stated but hopefully it was of some use to you looking at the video but let me know your thoughts on this particular model have you tried it do you like the features on it I think the power output is impressive and the button design and interface have been thought about and that's something which I haven't seen on some weapon lights but I'm far from an expert with weapon lights so really that's over to you and many of my viewers might be uh, regular users of firearms so give me your feedback on this have you used one what do you think about it or are there any areas that you might change